Dear colleagues, this is fecal emulsification of an intumescent cataract. Let us observe the surgical steps. This is the main incision. It's a 2.8 millimeter incision with a steel keratome. And now, this is a side port on the right side of the main incision. And this is another side port on the left side of the main incision. And now, I want to stain the anterior capsule of this cataractus lens with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. And here goes the 0.06% tripan blue dye. The dye must be sprayed evenly on all parts of the anterior capsule and underneath an air bubble since the dye is not diluted by aqueous humor the staining is very nice within a very short time. And now the dye is washed out. Now, viscoelastic substance is injected into the anterior chamber. And I use only hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. I can manage very well and I believe you also can manage very well with this very economic viscoelastic substance. It is 2% SPMC. Now take a 26 case band needle, make a cut at the central part of the capsule. You can see oily fluid has come out. Now take a uterator forceps, hold this capsular tag and do a very small rexis just around the anterior pole of this cataractus lens. And this is the small opening through which you will aspirate some cortical matter and decrease the intralenticular pressure. Yes, in intumescent cataracts, the intralenticular pressure is high and that's why you see Argentine flag sign and the rexis, the capsule tends to run away as you try to do capsular rexis. I have taken a Simco cannula and I am aspirating some cortical matter superficial cortical matter and what you do now is you just tap on the lens after decreasing the intralenticular pressure if you want to decrease it further you just have to tap on the lens try to rotate the lens and what will happen is the cortical matter from behind will come along the equator anteriorly and you can aspirate that also. You see, lot of viscoelastic substance has come out anteriorly and the nucleus is just floating in the BSS now. So this is a free floating nucleus and it is very easy to enlarge this small rexis into an optimum sized one. Just make a cut like this. Small cut, oblique cut. Take the uterata, hold this small tag and go all along. Hold the tag again and just enlarge the rexis like this. It is very simple and once you do this in one case you will do it in every case I can assure you that it is so simple you can manage with very economic viscoelastic substance SPMC you don't have to put the burden on the patient of costly viscoelastic substances and now free floating nucleus how to hold it the bevel may, may, should be sideways or it should be beveled down. If the bevel is off, it is very difficult to hold a free floating nucleus. So hold the nucleus with the bevel sideways or beveled down and chop this nucleus into several fragments. This is a brittle nucleus. Yes, most of the intumescent cataracts have 
brittle nucleus about 70 percent about 20 percent are not that brittle and 10 percent cases you'll see a brown nucleus just covered by this white material this is the last piece of the nucleus and this is the epinucleus and it is removed your food control should be very good you must not use ultrasonic energy when nothing is there in front of the tip of the phaco handpiece now remove some cortical matter very little cortex is there in this case I usually use a 23 gauge Simcoe cannula you can use bimanual irrigation aspiration or coaxial IA entirely depends on the surgeon surgeon's preference and now you can see some cells that's sticking just in front of the main incision so I've taken the irrigating probe and just taking help of the irrigating fluid to dislodge these cells it is the safest way to polish the posterior capsule even in cap back mode I have made posterior capsular rents very little vacuum cap back mode still but I have never made a piece rent with this and now this is a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens being implanted keeping the AC formed by irrigating fluid the lens has gone into the capsular bag and the irrigating proof dials the lens and places it in a satisfactory position and now this is a bit of moxifloxacin and now I hydrate the side ports so that these step incisions become watertight and now I always do a final lavage of the anterior chamber at this time I irrigate double irrigate irrigation is there and through the aspirating port I irrigate some fluid and whatever viscoelastic substance is sticking to the corneal endothelium that also comes out now I form the anterior chamber and conclude the case thank you very much for watching this video hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills that is my only aim to develop your surgical skills don't forget to check the integrity of the owns thank you very much